So this is the view from my desk this morning. Hi there, thanks for joining me. Um, right, so I've been making an abundance of these gorgeous little books and I thought you might like to see me make a couple so that possibly you might make some as well. I'll give you the measurements for them. Um, I'm using A3 paper. Now I'm actually using a mixed media paper for these so they're actually going to be little art journals but you could easily use just general A3 paper. Now in the US, I'm not entirely sure what that size is, so I will just double check on what A3 is the most, um, the closest sort of resemblance to an A3 sheet. Um, and then if you want to go ahead and do something similar, you can do. So I've been making two or three sort of different sizes. They're tiny, as you can see, so they sort of fit in the palm of your hand. They make great um, little brag books for putting tiny pictures of grandchildren in but these ones are just really lovely for little art books as well because I'm using that specially um, designed paper to take mixed media um, and I'll be um, yeah I'll be using them for little art journals for myself and the reason I'm making so many of them um, is because I'm going to use some of my slow stitch projects to put them on the top um, of them just to decorate them because I thought that might be a cute little way of using those up. So they're little concertina books. I use the A3 paper because you get a, quite a nice long sheet and you don't have to stick pieces of paper together but if you're using smaller pieces of paper you could you could easily do that just cut the pages and then stick them together to make the concertina and I really like these little square pages I just think they're so cute uh, so that's my favourite one and I can actually get four to a sheet of these and I'm using this <coughs> excuse me sorry about the throat clear I know I look awful I've got just got out of the shower and I've got either the worst um hay fever or it's a rotten cold but either way I'm feeling quite congested so do excuse me I will be clearing my throat a little bit today um but anyway I am using this craft board because I've got quite a lot of it because it's sort of a, a, a off cut thing from my other business um but you could use cereal packets or um, just you know the back of notebooks so it's just some sort of stiff card stiff board that you just use for the front and back of the little concertina book I just love them because they just move they're great um, so what I have done is just write down the measurements so this is an A3 sheet I don't know whether this is actually you're going to see this reversed you might see it reversed because the way the camera is filming but it's an A3 sheet, and A3 sheets in centimetres are 29.5 centimetres that way by 42 centimetres that way. So it's quite a big sheet of paper. And if I am cutting uh, the small square pieces, I'm actually cutting them at 7 centimetres um, all the way along. And then I've just got a strip left, um, which obviously I'm just discarding, but you could use it for like swatch or something or you could just have a, a larger book on, on for the fourth one so it's seven centimeters um, and then you get four books out of one a3 sheet or the slightly elongated ones i'm cutting at 10 centimeters ish uh, which is about four inches um and the last one is a little bit smaller i think it's about nine centimeters so but these ones really great because if anyone does ATCs or ACEOs, they're about that size and they fit really nicely in here. So you could make a selection of them when you've got about five minutes to spare. Just make yourself a little um, tiny work of art and then you can stick them in these books because they're, they're quite small themselves. They're what, two and a half inches by three and a half inches. So that's like four inches. So that fits really nicely on those little pages. Um, it, it's barely on the nine centimeter one, but um, but still does fit. So anyway, starting to ramble out. So I'm going to take you to the top down camera, and we're going to make a book together. Really simple. You probably made this sort of thing before, but it's really easy to sort of mass make these. So what we do need is uh, a method of cutting this. Now I have actually been using a scalpel and my um, large ruler, my quilting ruler. Um, just because I've got a large cutting mat and it was just easy for me to do that but it's easy to cut it with scissors as well you just have to probably do your um, lines first on your paper if you're doing that so that you get a nice straight cut or if you've got a nice long guillotine but I got rid of my old A3 guillotine because I sort of messed it up a little bit using 
uh, heat and bond and cutting heat and bond with it which sort of messed up the blade a little bit and I couldn't replace the blade so there you go there's a little story for you okay so let's go to the other camera right then so the first thing we're going to do is cut our sheets of paper so the A3 paper whether that's cardstock using or paper and we're going to cut those using the dimensions that I'll put in the um, notes um, so to either make three, four rather of the square pieces, we're going to cut at seven centimetres um, on the short side, all the way across so that you've got long strip of paper um, for the pages. And if you want to make slightly larger rectangle sized books, then you're going to cut at approximately 10 centimetres and you'll get three books out of those three lots of pages or that's about four inches four inches and then three and a half inches using an A3 sheet so we'll cut those out and then we'll end up with the pages so let's move that out of the way so we'll either end up with the square sheets or the the rectangle ones so what we're going to do then is score at seven centimeter intervals the whole way down the strip and I've done that for both the rectangle ones and the um, square pages so this will be seven centimeter square pages and then we are going to fold the pages so that they are in a concertina shape and that score line just helps them to give a nice zigzag fold and what we're going to do then is attach two of the pages to the um, the mount board or the craft board or the cereal packet or whatever you've done to cut out for your your covers now one of the first things I usually do when I'm making something like this, I make myself a template for covers so that I can replicate the same thing over and over. So the cover for the square books, because they're seven centimetre square pages when they're folded, is an eight centimetre square piece of board. So obviously this one is just my template, but you can see that that will give us plenty of space all the way around to glue the pages in then you've not got any overhang so if you do fill the book then it's not going to spill out either side of the mount board um, and for the rectangle book this is my template and it's eight centimeters by 11 centimeters and that's that works for all three types um, of sheets that you'll end up with um, because one obviously is going to be slightly smaller if you're using the A3 uh, unless you cut them all equally um, and I did double check the the closest size in the USA is different it we think it may, may be 11 by 17 inches so you could then either make three inch squares possibly or something like that so yeah and if you're scoring it will be two and three quarter inches uh, all the way along so two and three quarter inches and then two and three quarter inches all the way long, along so you'll end up with one two three four five score lines so let's just fold these up and it does help so they're not quite so springy to get yourself a um, bone folder and just to squish those fold lines so that it's not quite so springy when you're putting it together so I've cut my board covers and they I'm going with the uh, rectangle ones so it's the eight centimeter by 11 centimeter covers and I've cut three lots of those because I've got three page pieces to the sheet of a a3 card that I'm using so I've got three lots of covers so now I'm just, all I'm going to do is just stick well, 
right, we're just adding some glue on the outside of one of the pages. Going to press that onto the middle of a cover. So I have got a little bit of overspill. And then the other cover, I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. So just add in some glue putting plenty on. This stuff's quite strong though, isn't it? The art glitter glue. So it should hold quite well. And then just I just pop the back cover on and I just make sure that it lines up really well with the first cover that I put on. Just make sure all the sides line up really well and then just give it a really good squeeze. Get rid of any any bits of glue that have squished out the sides. There you go, so that's the first one done. I'm going to complete these two as well. I haven't cut the covers for my square books yet, so I'm going to leave those and do those later, but I'll actually have four of the little square ones to do. Now, because I decided I want a ribbon closure or something to keep this book closed, before I glue in these pages, I'm going to just have a quick look to see what's in my blue box. And I'll probably use this ribbon here. Just going to take some some of that off. It's going to have to be enough to go around the box, go around the book rather, and then tie in a pretty bow. So that should be enough. Of course, I'll remove my scissors where I want them. Okay, so I'll just cut that off there. And before I actually stick the page on the book, I'm just going to fold that in half and just pop a little bit of glue to glue it down there. I might use the three in one craft glue for this. So just pop a little bit in the middle. And then just put that on there. Just to hold that in place and make sure that it's well stuck down before I put the pages on. I don't want to touch it because I don't want to get my fingers all gluey. Okay, so then when I put the pages down, like I did before, just added some glue to the outside of one of the pages. And I'll just pop that on top. And then that'll act as a closure. I'll just add some more on this side here. I 
and line up my back cover or front cover, whichever. Make sure the cover's lined up nicely. And then check it's nicely stuck down on the inside. Put my little pin back in my bottle of glue so it doesn't clog up. Right, so that's lovely. So we'll consider that the top of the book. And this will then tie the book closed. like this. There we go. Okay, so that's the little book that I've had to use to decorate with my blue topper that I've made. So let's have a quick look at the topper. Uh, you may have seen a video with this in already. I'm not sure which order these are going up in, but let's see. So this is from the blue box, and we've got a couple of little fish, some sequins and, and um, so on gems, and lots of texture going on with some mesh. We've got some stitching underneath to add a little bit of uh, interest underneath there sequins underneath and on top this absolutely gorgeous cashmere wool that's so soft from a, a recycled jumper and some really cute um, printed cotton fabric and a bit more texture there with a, a piece of mat that was just die cut and um, and it's just on a felt backing with some batting now you're not going to see any of the stitching that messy stitching there but um, it's, it was good to have the batting on, on it because that just gives you a little bit more substance to work with. So I really enjoyed making this in the garden this morning. And now I'm going to use it as a topper for this book. So I'm just going to take that off. I'm sure it's dry enough now to attach this and I think obviously I'm going to have to tie that over there and that will have a, a ribbon tying it so you'll, you'll have an even more texture when that's on there. I think I quite like that actually so I am going to stick with it that way rather than the other side. Who knows yet, I might even make a topper for that side but I think for now I'm just going to stick this on and I'm going to use the 3-in-1 craft glue and just add a generous amount to the back. I'm really pleased with the way that turned out. So thanks for joining me, I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made these little books and I'll be making a few more I think of these so if you don't mind give me a thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye.